Welcome to Spoon Splint Application presented by Shaky Paws. So some of the materials you're going to need for a spoon splint is of course going to be the spoon splint itself, cut to size for the patient and padded at the end. You can use some of the uh, foam and just bend it down and tape it down. That should add quite a bit of cushion so we don't get any chafing. Um, elasticon, tongue depressor, bandage scissors, vet wrap, non-porous white tape, cast padding, and stretch gauze or cling. So for the application of the spoon splints or any splint, please make sure the patient has got uh, adequate pain medication on board. Hopefully they're sedated or under anesthesia. Uh, we're not going to be doing the rear limb splint. We're going to be doing the spoon splint, but it's going to be the same concept. And if you notice, it's going to be very similar to that of a modified Robert Jones but just incorporating the splint into it. So the very first step, of course, is going to be your stirrups along the lateral aspects of the patient. And then your tongue depressor to prevent the tape from sticking together, just like that. Then you're gonna go ahead and place your cast padding and you're gonna want a pretty good thick layer on your cast padding to help prevent any pressure sores from the spoon splint itself. Making sure with every lap you're going to go ahead and um, overlap by 50% on the bandage and check with your doctor if you want if they want them to include the toes or not. And I'm going to add a couple layers here because I don't want that spoon splint to cause any sort of pressure sores for my lovely little patient here. The next part of the secondary layer that we're going to be doing is our cling or stretch gauze. So you're going to start at one aspect of the limb. Now you're going to start adding a little bit of pressure because we do want to compress the fracture and not allow it to move. You don't want to pull the stretch material to its 100% tension. You just want it snug and with every pass you're going to pull just a little bit more going all the way down to the end. Now I'm going to just let the rest of this kind of fall free and now I'm going to take my spoon splint. Take this off real quick. Reflect the tape up onto the bandage itself and onto the splint itself. Place the splint and place it onto the splint. Remember the stirrups is what helps hold everything together. And now you take the rest of your cling or stretch gauze with every pass, adding a little bit of pressure to help hold that splint on. You can see I'm adding pressure. Now I am adding a little bit more tension than I did on the first one because I really want that limb to go ahead and seat into that spoon splint as much as I can. And this is why we've padded the top of this because this is going to cause rubbing onto the patient causing decubical ulcers and chafing. We don't want that. We'll do a couple passes here. And remember spoon splints are going to be for the front limbs and for any fractures that's going to be distal to the humerus. If the actual humerus is fractured, this isn't going to work for us very well because we have to immobilize the joint above and the joint below whenever we're placing a splint. Now I have included the toes in this particular bandage, so I'm going to take my vet wrap and go around the ends of the toes to make it pretty and be careful about the folding here. You don't want to create any pressure sores, especially with a spoon splint that's going to stay on for a little bit. So we don't necessarily want to have any pressure sores there that's going to cause us problems. Now with the Elasticon, I'm going to be stretching this out to almost lines to about 70% tension of the a, or vet wrap 
because I really need that to stay on. And I've placed a, quite a bit of cast padding on here so I can add more pressure without fear of creating any decubical ulcers. Unlike the modified Robert Jones where there's, there's cast padding but there's not a lot. So I've got a, quite a bit more on there so I can safely add more tension to this patient and it's gonna be okay. And remember every pass I'm adding a little bit more tension as well as doing a 50% pass, as in overlapping the bandage material by 50%. Now at this point, the bandage should not come off because I'm gonna place Elasticon around the top of it here. And the whole purpose of the Elasticon is just to make sure we don't let any material fall down into the bandage. Its purpose is not to keep the bandage on. The, the stirrups is, help, is what helps keep the bandage on. You have to argue with the Elasticon. So we're gonna place the Elasticon like so, making sure about half of it is going on the bandage and about half of it is going on the skin. Hopefully not hair, it's gonna be ouchy getting off of that. You can place another little bit of Elasticon on the end to go ahead and help with durability of the bandage. Um, the purpose, and remember when you're placing the splint, when the patient walks, the spoon splint should extend just a little bit so the patient is stepping on the splint, not its foot. And that's gonna go with the rear limb band or splint as well. You want it to extend a little bit so they're stepping on the splint, not their foot. And there is our lovely Spoon Splint. Thanks for watching this video and for further information about Shaky Paws, check out the links below.